educational establishments collaborating there locally on their, uh, what we can call the regional innovation ecosystems. And on the other hand, what is now on the topic uh, of this conference as well, smart specialization. And that means that we take the full use of all knowledge, what is available, what has been invented somewhere, can be used in my region, in your region, and, and so on. And that means that we need more European partnerships, and that is very much based on the smart specialization. And that seems to be now finally coming and going through the European Union policy very strongly and on that so we need uh, this digitalization. Uh, especially when we think the, the future, so people of organizations in future-centered societies think about what is coming and what is possible. They are aware of what's emerging, what's converging, and what the implications for society are. They understand where they uh, come from as a starting point uh, where to go next. And they are ready to uh, what we can call not just planning, 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 but more prototyping, experimenting, failing fast as learning, and then scaling the results through the rapid prototyping to the rest of Europe. This is very much what the, the, these future societies are, and this is uh, what the place-based innovation ecosystems can and will bring the European Union policy. And that is where uh, the role of Joint Research Centre has been instrumental, and uh, this is what I'm actually challenging the Joint Research Center to create more. What is the new role of cities or city-driven regions on this new development? And that's where the action needs to be, and that's where the action is, but that needs to be based on this uh, partnerships uh, using all the resources in Europe. Is Europe today a, a future-centered society? That is what we can ask. And some people and some organizations certainly are but many others have a short-term orientation and operate with blinkers in what they mistake for the here and now moving from day to day and crisis to crisis with insufficient attention to the wisdom of larger focus and longer uh, time frame provide. How we can address this challenge uh, with the Joint Research Center Committee of the Regions as we represent all the cities and regions in EU decision making. So we have created, or actually Joint Research Center created this science meets parliament, science meets regions, what Vladimir Suha already mentioned. In addition, being here, I want to mention uh, the, the role of the Bulgarian uh, delegation to Committee of the Region with the Tanya Ristova, the mayor of Kabrovo being the, the chair president of that, with Malina Edreva being another key, key instrumental person on that, so representing strongly Sofia. One of the good examples we're actually having, uh, Mr. Donchev here, I want to mention that uh, some two years ago, we were in uh, spending three days in Kabrovo, your former city, and now where Tanya Ristova is the, now the mayor. They organized uh, uh, a three-day innovation camp uh, with 100 participants, one-third from uh, local, young and older people, people with different backgrounds, one-third were coming from other parts of Bulgaria, and one-third from abroad. And that was really tackling these grand societal challenges, and actually uh, mentioned especially, uh, uh, Tomislav Donchev, you were one of the challenge owners there trying really to create and get new fresh ideas from the participants. And our role with the Committee of the Region is now that when we have organized uh, 200 events, uh, citizen dialogues in all parts of Europe. So we are now putting our proposals for the uh, President uh, Donald uh, Tusk uh, and the Council. So what should happening uh, be happening in in, in in the next uh, years in, in uh, EU. And that's very much on based on this kind of thinking on the new role of cities and, and regions. Uh, cities are places, both physical and here especially, I want to stress digital places where people can meet, encounter new ideas, explore future possibilities, think outside the 
normal boxes, learn about how society is changing and what the social and societal innovations can bring to the everyday life of, of people. This is very much that we need to showcase in Europe, and that's why I think that, uh, that now here uh, I can call on behalf of the Committee of the Region, so Vladimir Suha and your team to move more with the cities, defining what is the new role of cities, city-driven regions on this kind of, not the foresight exercise as a traditional academic scientific sense, but that starting from the foresight, seeing the future, what that can bring to the, the people, how we can mobilize the citizens uh, to take uh, with their different interests and different backgrounds, more important role in creating the innovative future. And that's very much this uh, regional innovation ecosystems. That's very much digital innovation hubs are crucial. And what uh, uh, Jordanka Fandakova here already mentioned, the collaboration that Sofia is actively uh, participating, uh, collaborating with the uh, cities in Finland and in Estonia on digitalizing the urban development. And this is what I want to conclude, that there are a lot of these good, good exercises. In Finland, we, where I come from, we have six largest cities using the urban part of the cohesion funding uh, for a joint development so called six ICA, six time uh, collaboration, focusing on what we want to get new things done, and that's very much kind of co-creating new uh, things, and this is something that we can definitely bring to Sofia and other uh, cities in Europe, uh, how we move on with the digitalized uh, new development processes. So thank you very much for Sofia and Bulgaria on what you have already done during your presidency. I've been here quite often recently, and uh, it's our joint interest to take these uh, uh, proposals to uh, concrete actions. So experimenting, prototyping, and scaling for the whole Europe. Thank you. Many, many thanks, Marco. And uh, indeed, what you said about the cities uh, and GRC, we are already setting up the laboratory of cities, and I hope very much that uh, if I meet, uh, I think, tomorrow, uh, Mayor of Sofia, then uh, she will agree to be part of this, this laboratory and this experiment, because this experimentation is very important, as you, as you mentioned. Uh, President Rivalski, uh, science, uh, innovation was mentioned many times, so I, it's always, uh, you know, a sort of uh, uh, stereotype thinking uh, uh, that science should be at the beginning uh, of uh, all innovation, which, which is not true, we, we know, and... Uh, uh, how, have you, but how, how you are trying to uh, somehow overcome this? How, how are you trying to put the science into the heart of, uh, of, of innovation ecosystem here in Sofia, but in Bulgaria, but also in this part of Europe? So what is the role of uh, academy or academies in plural in this, in this respect? Thank you. Gospodin uh, Schucher. Thank you, Mr. Shuha. First of all, congratulations to the organizers of this conference because smart specialization uh, and innovation is the driving force of economies and societies in the modern world. At the same time, however, uh, having said that, we need to look at the to look at the broader context. Uh, you mentioned the role of uh, science in education, uh, and my colleague uh, um, Professor Dimov also touched upon this. We make a huge effort in this respect. You know that. Uh, we have a strategy for smart specialization in this country. Mayor van de Kuva mentioned that uh, a similar strategy uh, 
adopted uh, was adopted for Sofia with the support of the research uh, community. After all, Sofia takes a large share of the innovations in this country. Last year, uh, we adopted a strategy until 2030 for our uh, research activities. We have a roadmap for our research, uh, which the Academy is working upon. Allow me also to mention the very positive impact of uh, operational programs, both uh, the uh, OP on competitiveness, but also the operational program on uh, science and uh, smart growth, which um, is now working on implementing um, implementing uh, n top achievements uh, in the field of excellence. Then we are working on a series of scientific programs which uh, are uh, important for the whole society. And of course, innovation would have its leading role there. On Mr. Schucher's question, what we in the Bulgarian Academy of Sciences do as the main center of uh, knowledge in this country. The first and most important issue is to rethink the balance between fundamental uh, science and innovations. Without fundamental research, we can't even imagine that we may have any success in applied science and innovation. Uh, so applied uh, Fundamental science has its own uh, role to play. But in the last 10 or 15 years, uh, in the context of challenges uh, of uh, the modern society, we see a strong growth in applied uh, research. If in the academy 10 to 15 years, more than half of the research was in fundamental science, now more than half is in applied research. So we uh, do all we can in order to get this trend well established. And let me stress again, we can't think that uh, um, we can leave fundamental science uh, aside. If we do that over time, we lose applied science as well. The other important trend is subordination and synchronization of uh, the policies in research with national and EU trends. So in this context, we are almost ready to adopt our strategy for research until 2030. More and more in the last few years, funding within the Academy of Science in Bulgaria is based on results. And innovation uh, plays a leading role in that. I would say the Bulgarian Academy of Sciences is doing very well uh, in uh, innovations in the uh, scientific infrastructure. We work on programs on uh, OP competitiveness and um, the competitions for uh, excellence and uh, centers of excellence and centers of competence. Within the potential of the Bulgarian Academy of Science, there is a lot of potential in innovation. You know that in our strategy for smart specialization, there are four main areas. I don't want to uh, rank them, but they are electronics and clean technologies, informatics and ITC, uh, healthy living, uh, and recreational technologies, creative and recreational technologies. We have excellent experts in all these fields. And uh, here I would make mention of biotechnology, uh, artificial intelligence, nanotechnologies, new materials. These are fields which are of key importance not only to this country, but also have their place in um, President Juncker's plan what we can do and what we are doing, uh, and which is linked up to transfer of knowledge and technology in the field of innovation, I would like to mention the following. We are a key player in cooperation with business. In the last few years, we have been working on over 40 different projects with Bulgarian and foreign businesses. 
I can't quote the number of patents we have registered, but I think only last year we registered 20 patents within the Academy of Sciences in Bulgaria. We also work on projects in uh, updating the infrastructure for research. So, so much for our global activities. At the regional level, uh, at the national level, we are very active too. And when we talk of the regional level, we are thinking of Southeastern Europe and the Western Balkans. We have uh, uh, networks which link 17 of the biggest cities in order to support the transfer of knowledge at the local level. Then there are other projects, and I'm not going into uh, for the detail, because Mr. Dimov mentioned our role in the region, but we are a leader in the uh, uh, high productivity uh, computing and the supercomputer, which was mentioned. We have um, joint projects with uh, Romania and uh, the Western Balkans in this field. So we understand our role as a regional organization, uh, an organization with a regional significance in the transfer of knowledge. I will conclude by saying that we all understand the challenges uh, we are confronted with in the field of innovation, particularly in a country, in a region like ours, where industrial development is still not at the level we wish to see when the level of innovation absorption is not that high. We know what the key problems here are, the human potential, the continuing migration, the brain drain. We still lack well-functioning innovation leaders. Uh, that are capable to start from the very beginning and then come up with something which can be adopted by uh, businesses. And we need programs to help us solve these problems, uh, which would give a boost to economies like ours, which are still uh, in transition. We are encouraged by seeing uh, that uh, the share of industrial production is increasing, and of course, this is good for innovation. And finally, I hope we will find an answer to the question how to strike a balance uh, in the involvement of all stakeholders. Uh, on the one hand, uh, uh, education, research, uh, government administration, and the society as a whole. Thank you for your attention. Many, thank, many thanks, President. Um, I think Deputy Prime Minister uh, that we fulfilled your wish at the beginning to avoid cliches. Uh, so if I if I look at that, I think this was uh, this was quite successful from that point of view. Obviously, we were uh, according to the agenda we were supposed to finish right now, but I don't think that we should finish. I think that we should go on because we started a little bit uh, later. Then we will have this innovation for security. Uh, invented maybe uh, later on. I it, there, there is one. Uh, there are two emerging questions from what all what uh, what you said, and I would like to ask you these two questions if you if you allow me, and obviously I will ask you for brief uh, answers. One is uh, um, this is a big issue which was mentioned in one or another way by <clears throat> by all of you, and that's uh, what we should do in Europe in allowing the failures. I think that. This is, we know that innovation is, is this bumpy process. It's not linear. It's not that I decide today to do something and I'm successful tomorrow in delivering. So there are many non-successes, but uh, in our culture, in our public administration, in the way how, how the money is being, uh, in the way budgeted, uh, managed, uh, spent, we don't have space for failures. What we should change at European level, national level, regional, local level, in education system, how we should, uh, in a way, incorporate failures into the ecosystem of uh, uh, innovation. How we can, in a way, because it's completely different from uh, US society, where the failure, if you don't fail, you, you don't even get the money. 
uh, because they uh, they are not sure that that you are uh, experienced enough because this is part of a, part of your experience but it's uh, we are not even talking about the failures so always we are giving the the, the examples of successes uh, what what we should do how we can how we can change uh, or how we can start changing this kind of uh, attitude That's why it's very easy to ask questions, but a lot more difficult, slightly more difficult to answer them. Well, I don't know if there's anything we can change on the legislative level. Because, yes, all reform, all substantial change should be based in law. The main deficiencies in uh, this uh, respect are cultural ones, behavioral ones. And it is, above all, a matter of education. What I have in mind is not only critical thinking. It's, it's the urge to do something else, something new, to take a new road. It is a cultural issue, a matter of mentality in many member states. Uh, in many member states, a failure uh, is a source of stigma. It stigmatizes, even if it only occurs once in life, no matter if it's in business, in politics, even in sport. And if there's something to take away from other cultures, that would be the determination to try again and again, because you gain experience with failure. And we should stop stigmatizing mistakes. Now, I'm not sure this is, I don't think this is achievable in politics, but in business, in science, yes, we can. So yes, my uh, short answer is that it is education we should be looking at. Yes, indeed, this is the greatest challenge, mentality, stopping stigmatizing those who have failed once. And indeed, Europe is very different uh, from other places in the world in this regard. Think about a startup that has once failed, how difficult it is uh, for it to uh, get funding anew, to try again. And yes, indeed, I also believe, I agree that uh, education is very important. Uh, another important thing is close cooperation with all stakeholders, the finance sector, uh, education, institutions. These should be things that are talked about. There should be awareness campaigns. Uh, we know that the successful of today outside Europe have experienced a number of cases of failure. And this is something that affects us, uh, affects us all as a society in the long-term perspective. <laughs> Microphone, please. Mr. Dimov. <laughs> what uh, what uh, Mr. Donchev said, that the main problem is that normally people are married just once and they're not trying to do it for the uh, next time so this is this is how to learn how to learn to be active to i nachina da da upitame da budem aktivni yes we should try to be active and succeed we should not give up after we fail once i deeply believe that the key to success and innovation is education. And that's education in a much broader sense that we are now considering. This is something that should start preschool, from the early years at school, because the human being has a staggering potential to bring together various areas of skills, and even if they fail in something, for example, they take up mathematics and things don't go as well as uh, planned or hoped, and then they um, manage to, to succeed in, in art, for example. We need a synergy of education, science, and innovation. 
What's the natural process? How does it uh, how does it run? An educated person very often thinks about how to improve things, how to make things better, but then they need the potential in order to translate some research results into innovation. It takes an environment, a climate that can appreciate that innovation so that it can then grow into technologies. This requires infrastructure. This requires funds. If you want to work your, your, your field, you, you need the tools for that. Uh, without, without supercomputers, without the technical capacity, Europe can never do a lot in the field of AI. So I believe that a synergy of education, science, and innovation, coupled with opportunities to implement, to apply interventions, that's the answer. And that takes infrastructure. There are things that need to be in place, first and foremost. And what we are trying to do is to create the best possible conditions for people working on successful research projects to uh, translate those uh, uh, projects into innovations so that every citizen could benefit from that and uh, regional development could benefit from that as well. Thank you. Thank you. Let me add that. Uh, to that so that the Committee of the Region, we defined uh, uh, for our policy three key kind of focus areas where we need to influence through the cities and regions to the EU policy. One is the entrepreneurial mindset. The other one is uh, really moving faster to digital single market, kind of fully functioning digital single market. And the third uh, uh, was defined as, as smart specialization, so and build on that, so more this European partnership, so that the knowledge created in one place will be used in, in another one. All of these are targeted for sustainable growth, not whatever growth, but for sustainable growth. And on that, whatever of these aspects we think about, so everything is based on learning. So we, um, as politicians, we need to learn, uh, you need to learn, and we need to encourage our children and uh, uh, our uh, senior citizens, uh, silver potential to learn, keep on learning. And I think this is the core of this, So, but we need to move faster so that we can really tackle the grand societal challenges. Okay, President. I mean, uh, to uh, Thank you. Um, just like Mr. Donchev, I don't think anything wrong, anything scary in failure and mistakes for innovators, for researchers. All of us have been, who have been in uh, academia know all too well that in order to reach truth, uh, you make a lot of mistakes. Truth takes failure first of all. So we should be more tolerant, more accepting uh, uh, with our youth. We should support them and make it clear that there is nothing wrong with failure. In uh, the Mathematics and Informatics Institute at the Bulgarian Academy, uh, we have a student institute, uh, which is a center for uh, high school uh, students who can uh, take part in projects led by uh, their teachers or some university students. But all this uh, go, leads to a final in a competition, a final, which gives them, final stage, which gives them the opportunity to go to a relevant research scientific institute in uh, the US, where they stay for six weeks uh, to work on other projects uh, led, supervised by uh, world-known established scientists. So 
one of the boys was a runner-up. He got second place in the uh, area of information technologies. And I tried to reassure him. I told him, there's so much ahead, ahead of you. And only two years later, that boy had uh, one of the most successful startups in Bulgaria. It's called Melissa. They develop uh, smart solutions uh, uh, for implement control. So his first failure, first case of failure, didn't stop him from uh, moving forward. Sometimes, however, failures do lead to failure. Okay, and my second question is a little bit different. Uh, in uh, uh, looking at the smart specialization, uh, evaluation of smart specialization, there is one weakness, one strong weakness which was identified in, in a smart specialization, and that's the locking in the regions into their problems, into their challenges, so that the region is trying to solve the problems within the region by using the money within the region, in spite of the fact that also the financial regulations and the, and the rules are allowing to go, uh, to go elsewhere. But for most of the challenges of the regions, there is eventually a solution somewhere else, uh, in the country or in Europe. How we can achieve this kind of European dimension in solving or European cooperation in solving the regional, uh, regional issues? How we can help um, to reach out to the solutions which are probably somewhere else. And it is also, it is also uh, what you, President of Academy, you mentioned that this uh, capacity for absorb, absorb, absorbing the innovation. Because very often we have a small entrepreneur in one region. There is no capacity in the region, but maybe somewhere else there is a capacity to absorb. But they don't know. We don't have a mechanism. We don't have uh, platforms where this can, that this can happen. What should be invented in a way? What uh, way uh, we should approach this, uh, this issue? Because that would be extremely bringing a lot of efficiency and we can move as a Europe much faster forward because we will be helping with this. I see Commissioner wants to, uh, to respond first. Yes, I'd like to uh, bring up three initiatives of the Commission that seek to uh, face to meet this challenge. We, connectivity is one of the major problems and we should not ignore it. 76% of urban areas do have good connectivities. Uh, that's 30 megabytes per second. In rural areas, that drops to uh, less than 40%. I'd like to thank very much uh, now Mr. Markula and the Committee of the Regions, they help us a lot in uh, developing a common platform to overcome uh, all obstacles for investment. Secondly, our industry digitalization strategy. Um, by 2020, we uh, are planning to have a digital hub in every region of Europe. So this is, would be a place where the startups can go and trial and test their, their uh, model to get training, to get information, get in touch and network with others. What we're trying to achieve is that all these hubs are interconnected so that uh, good practice can be exchanged. And our last initiative, which was launched a um, um, month ago, that's called Innovation Radar. There are more than 3,200 innovations all over Europe that are pulled together in that platform. So everyone who's interested can um, tap into it, get in uh, touch with another region, find out what funding there is and whether or not they can take part. This is what the Commission uh, is now doing. We are trying to uh, uh, enable the local level more and more, to empower it more and more, uh, in order so, so that they uh, can build up their capacity, uh, build up uh, and enhance their skills and uh, absorption rates. Um, as uh, called the Dubai. Yes, I'd like to add something as well. I think the most powerful adaptation tool is the market itself. When a product, an innovation, uh, is sought after, when there's demand for it, this is uh, the leading factor. 
And what uh, Mrs. Gabrielle said is very important. European initiatives uh, work within uh, large-scale European uh, projects, complex projects, uh, enables countries with uh, smaller capacities to very successfully take part in those uh, highly complex projects. Because it so happens that there are certain groups of innovators, of scientists or researchers who are very good at specific areas, such as genome research, personalized medicine, uh, outer space, and space technology. This is a huge field, but even in a country like uh, uh, Bulgaria, as small as Bulgaria, there are four uh, sub-areas of space studies that Bulgaria is very good at. And when we uh, work in collaboration with other countries, uh, e even China as well, they can see the potential uh, in that, and that potential is being utilized uh, quite to, to quite a full extent. So uh, combining the market and the natural way of uh, uh, finding of uh, finding innovations, uh, combining that with existing the existing capacities, existing research potential, can boost innovation, new technologies, very uh, very strongly. This is something that has been happening, and I think will continue in future as well. Uh, Commissioner Maria Gabriel, when you mentioned the collaboration with the Committee of the Region, so. We really see that we are more like a platform for bringing the, the uh, experiences from cities and regions. So, and we have challenged uh, our members to take their city or region as a forerunner, kind of pioneering certain things. And that is very important. So how to use uh, innovative public procurement, how to form a strategic alliance with the key stakeholders there locally, or what I said in my opening uh, speech uh, now here about this future-centered uh, society. So how we can have living labs, fab labs, incubators, accelerators, innovation camps, booth camps, whatever so they are, so that they are the places where people come and then they are really feeling that they are part of the team, kind of community inventing something important together. And that is something that we need uh, uh, to learn from these. But then we need, there we need the virtual reality, the digitalization. So to get them to work together and feel that we are part of that kind of uh, settings, uh, future centers are kind of part of the European uh, wide movement and learning from each other because that's where the, the, the real action can bring some new fresh ideas. And this is again, then we come back to the Learning is the key. There is one thing that we could do in order to overcome this um, lack that Mr. Shuha mentioned about technologies in the regions. This is something that can be done by the country in question. For instance, over a certain period of time, there may be priorities which have to do with innovation and applications development. But a country is called upon to maintain its scientific base so that when a new challenge emerges, then that country would be able to uh, resolve it based on knowledge. Therefore, the parliaments in countries such as ours, for instance, can be a great help in the future development of innovations by ensuring that there is a top quality scientific base. So for instance, the past year was very important for academia in Bulgaria because we had um, a research strategy which was adopted. And if that strategy is implemented across academia and scientific centers, then we would have the experts who would be top quality 
and they will be able to roll out the new technologies and specialization that we need. Yes, indeed, if priorities are adopted, then within a year you can build laboratories and equip them and in fact set up a whole research city. And we usually do not act so fast. But I trust in the approach, the smart specialization strategy. You cannot prioritize everything. If you prioritize everything, there is no priority, in fact. And then you have public funding, support for critical research, and so on and so forth. You have to prioritize. You're not going to, you're going to say where your advantages are and built upon that. But you cannot limit, you cannot introduce limitations. And I'll give you a few examples from Bulgaria. Some of the best things which have happened in the past decade in Bulgaria in production have happened without any public funding or planning. The Plovdiv industrial zone, the concentration of industries there, of companies which have nothing to do with machine building, have not received any support from the state. It's all thanks to private initiative. Decades ago, we did not have this objective in mind. For instance, that Bulgaria should be a leader in car parts or something, or that we should be amongst the top producers of lavender. There's no politician or public official who has thought of that. So to sum it up, in order to take up public funding, you have to have focus. And you have to rely on the triple S approach. But at the same time, there has to be a lot of we leeway. Uh, we cannot be wiser than the market and the world market system and dynamics. We cannot know better what the niches are. So everyone has to be left alone to live up to their destiny. And I'm talking here about regions or cities. Have been uh, better concluding remarks. Uh, um, so let me thank you, this wonderful panel Deputy Prime Minister Donchev, uh, Commissioner Gabriel, Deputy Minister Dimov, uh, Vice President uh, uh, Marko Markula, and uh, President uh, of the Academy, uh, Bulgarian Academy of Sciences, Revalski. I would like to invite my colleague Charlie Navicheva to take over the second panel.